no official organization or leaders. They're nationalist and they're anti-establishment. Their followers are fond of internet pranks and using provocative, often offensive messages to goad their enemies on both the right and left. The movement has branches in other countries too, including here in the UK, albeit on a smaller scale. Many of them are huge supporters of Donald Trump. During the election campaign, Hillary Clinton criticised Mr Trump for his ties to what she called the emerging racist ideology known as the alt-right. From the start, Donald Trump has built his campaign on prejudice and paranoia. He is taking hate groups mainstream. Many people within the movement admit it attracts some racists, but deny that's the main theme of the movement's political philosophy, saying white supremacists are but a marginal force. No this is how some alt-right supporters it. celebrated Donald Trump's election win at a meeting this weekend very close to the White House. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> The man you saw speaking there was the group's leader, Richard Spencer. He, he certainly wasn't elected on, on repeal Obamacare or anything like that. This is why he was elected, because he was the identity president. We know Muslims hate everyone. They go out of their way to make that clear. Alt-right has also got the support of this man, Milo Yiannopoulos, who runs the right-wing Breitbart website, which has been linked to the alt-right movement. You can define it very, very broadly to include sort of classical liberals, disaffected leftists, um, ordinary conservatives, and this new, young, very, uh, very energized, kind of trolly, mischievous, youthful contingent that has suddenly become interested in politics again. Donald Trump has recently appointed Stephen Bannon, the editor-in-chief of the Breitbart website, to be his chief strategist, a move which has been criticized. Now Mr Trump has distanced himself from the group which celebrated his election win with Nazi salutes. In an interview with the New York Times, he said, I condemn them, I disavow and I condemn. Let's talk now to Scott, let's talk now to Scott Lucas, who is professor, professor of American politics at the University of Birmingham, and he is originally from Alabama. Who do you think the alt-right are? The alt-right is a euphemism for white supremacy. I mean, let's call it what it is. Uh, whether you call it white identity, white nationalism, this is a movement which we have seen in the new media age, but it does tap into older movements. For example, where I grew up, we had white citizens leagues. We had an outfit called the Ku Klux Klan. And although this is not true of all people who support Donald Trump, certainly, or not even all who might support some of the views of white supremacy, this is a group which largely is anti-Muslim, often anti-Semitic, sometimes anti-Catholic, and sometimes anti-women. There's an element basically of misogyny as well. And as your reporter made clear, it is not separate from Trump's campaign. It is there through Steve Bannon, who said Breitbart News is a platform for the alt-right. Now Mr. Trump has distanced himself from them. Is that enough? No, because Trump was being either naive or deceptive yesterday, because Trump said in that same interview, oh, I would never have hired Steve Bannon if I, if I thought he was alt-right. Well, Steve Bannon has openly said he is part of the alt-right and that he promotes it. He said so as recently as August, a week before he joined Trump's campaign team. So, no, uh, Trump was trying out about a bit of PR yesterday, but he has not effectively distanced himself from the movement. Do you think that the number of white people in America at any point is going to become a minority and therefore the alt-right movement is only going to continue to grow? Well, I think your, the first question is almost certainly is that because of the expansion of other groups, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, there'll be a more diverse America in which whites are not the majority. Now, does that mean the alt-right becomes stronger? It's up to Americans. Um, Americans can basically take a stand and say, look, we are not simply going to be a white identity nation. We believe in defending the rights of all people, whatever their color, whatever their religion. So it's going to have to be a grassroots response to really confront some of the more extreme elements that you talked about in your video about the alt-right, which is basically saying a country for whites and no one else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Scott Lucas, Professor of American Politics at the University of Birmingham.